Hey everyone, let's have a September wrap up. September, I didn't upload as many videos as I had hoped to, but we had some interesting discussion. We talked about experimental books and I showed you some of the books that I have and what I liked about them and you told me your thoughts on experimental books and recommended some. Thank you all for that. I also did the Bougie booktube tag and I thought I was very boring and it was a long video, but you seem to enjoy it. So thank you very much for that. You were also interested in my unhaul of the books that I finally decided to move from postcard books to DNF and give them away. And that was very interesting because that's my most watched video this month. Apparently the word haul is enough you need to put in a video to get people to watch. Anyways. Thank you all for watching all those videos and of course also the letter to September which was a little bit late but yeah it's my channel I can do whatever I want. And that already brings us to the books that I read in September. I only uploaded one review with three books that I read on vacation. The first one of which was Foundation and Empire by Isaac Asimov. This is the second book in the Foundation series. I don't even know if it's a trilogy or four books. Anyways, so I read the first book ages ago and continued and found it hard to get back into the story. But once I was back in the writing and remembered the whole world, it was fun to read. It reads a little bit like historical fiction, but it's in the future. So it's very interesting. But the style it's written in, it's following certain events and history and certain people. So we focus on that. I found a little bit disappointing how backwards the idea of equality for women was still in one of the stories in most of the galaxy, apparently. But yeah, that's what you get. I enjoyed it. I'm going to continue with the series soon. The next book I actually bought in New York and left in New York was Planetfall by Emma Newman. I didn't really enjoy this book as much as I had hoped to. I mostly had problems with the narrative style and the things that were going on. It, wasn't the story I wanted. I go into more detail in the review video, but the story is on a planet where they are basically living in front of God's city and some mystery is happening, but I didn't really care for the mystery. I didn't care about the events that were going on there. I enjoyed the flashbacks and was more interested in the story, why they left Earth, how they managed to get there and what they were hoping to find there and all that story. That wasn't told. The person who was narrating was told to be 70 years old, but looked younger. But she also behaved younger. I couldn't feel the 70 years in her narration and in her behavior, and that disturbed me to no end. And the ending, yeah, not sure what that was about. So I decided to just not put it in my carry-on to take home. The last book I also reviewed in that vacation video is Mem, which is a very short book about a memory. In this world, it's set in 1920 something, I think, where there was an idea or a method created how you can extract memories from people so that the person doesn't remember the memory and the memory becomes a copy of the person. And we're following Mem, who's a memory of this one character, and she kind of has a personality and character and life to herself and it's very interesting it's exploring the ideas how life would be without our memories how we would be without our memories what we would turn into and also the idea of creating a new person or being and is it really a person on its own or is it still owned by the original person who had the memory I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed the writing. I can highly recommend it. It was a very interesting, thought-provoking, fun read. And it does have an interesting romance and plot twist to it. The last physical book I read was Eileen. And I really have to apologize to the book. It's very short, but it took me forever because I came back from New York, was suffering from jet lag, and then I had to go back to work. And I just couldn't find the time to sit down and read it. And it's a pity because Eileen is a very interesting book. It's set in the 1960s, but it's told by the character in retrospect 50 years later. So the person lives now, but tells us the story of how she left her hometown and when she was Eileen. And I really enjoyed the writing style. You could really feel that this was an older person looking back on her younger self criticizing what she's done, reflecting on what she had done, and also 
telling us how it was back then. And I really enjoyed that. This is what I was missing in Planetfall, where I felt the disconnect between the age and the narrative style. This was done very well in Eileen. Eileen is a character who's in her early 20s and working in a prison for young boys and having a um, tough life, let's say, like that. She's very angry and frustrated with herself. She has eating disorder problems, which back then they didn't call it eating disorder. The character mentioned that, but she was really trying to be thin, dealing with the alcoholism of her father and still the death of her mother, which happened a few years ago earlier and also her perverse fantasies as she calls it herself. It's very interesting, super well written and I didn't exactly see the plot twist but I really enjoyed the story. It's basically just one week but we also get some flash forwards let's say it to how her life turns out after she left her hometown and I highly enjoyed it, can only recommend it. I also read one ebook this month which was a reread of How to Marry a Werewolf and it's always just a fun fast read for me to just dive into a happy story so we don't need to talk about that that much again. The last of the books we'll listen to on audio. The first one I listened to was Children of Time, which is a science fiction story which is told alternatively from different perspectives. One perspective is on an arc of remaining humans, another perspective is on a planet where there was terraforming and something went wrong, so instead of humans evolving there was a society of spiders created, and then there's also the creator of the virus that created the spiders. Very, very simplified, but I tried to explain it before and took forever and still didn't make any sense. Anyways, the story evolves with these three different interests of future for humanity, for society. It takes a look at evolution, at humanity itself, at how societies are created and how we work together and different goals and ideas. I really enjoyed it, although I found it a little bit confusing. I still don't know where the people on the ark came from. I probably just missed that part in the audio, but I was too lazy to go back when I finally realized that I kind of don't know where they came from. I also found it kind of confusing and helpful that the spiders went through different generations but kept the same name. So the same type of character kept the same name throughout the generations, which kind of helped but also was confusing. I really enjoyed the story. I enjoyed all the politics behind it. Even though I'm not that interested in politics, it was very well done and not too boring, so I could really follow it and stay interested. There is a follow-up book which I honestly am not that much interested in because the story is finished as it is right now and I'm happy with the ending. I also listened to In Pieces by Sally Fields, which I'm, I'm not really sure what to say about it. It's not badly written, it's very well narrated, but something had me put off and not that interested while I was listening to it. And for a long time I couldn't pinpoint what it was. And at some point I realized it's not funny. Normally when you listen to memoirs, the people make a point of narrating it in a funny way, of giving you funny stories of their lives and concentrating on the good parts and even when they tell the bad parts, they keep it light. This is very serious and looking at a lot of tough times that Sally Fields had to go through and I don't know, I've never been that much of a Sally Fields fan. I don't really remember why I got the audiobook. I think someone really raved about it and I was in an I need a new memoir phase. It's not bad, but it's not a happy book. It's very interesting about her life and it's well produced. Let's leave it at that. The last audiobook I finished was Maybe in Another Life and this was basically picked because I was looking for some fluffy fun read and for some reason I came across this and I decided to give it a go and I highly enjoyed it. I basically listened to it in one day. It's the story of one woman and two alternative ways of 
how her life could go. This is something I generally enjoy. If you see a person making two different decisions and that spiraling their life in two completely different directions. And I really enjoyed how this played out. It was told alternatively, so we kept switching back and forth between the alternative lives. And as usual in these kind of stories, you learn different things about the character from the different stories. Sometimes you see different reactions that relate very close to what happened in the other story and sometimes you just interpret it with the knowledge you have from the other life, the parallel life. And I really enjoyed the romance that was in there. I really enjoyed how the life story played out and the twists and turns that separate lives took. And it was very well narrated and very well written. The only thing that disturbed me was going in that it's about a woman at the end of her 20s not having a career, not having a husband or a family and of course that's where everything ends. That's, is that a spoiler that she will have a career and a family at the end of these lives? I don't know but generally that's where this goes. It's a romance so you know you get a happy ending and I want happy endings, don't get me wrong, I don't really want to deal with bad endings, but this set out how frustrated she was with her life because lacking a man, lacking a career was, yeah, frustrating. And I also DNF'd a book at the beginning of the month, The Female Persuasion. This was one of the books I got last year and I really don't remember why I really wanted it. I think when the book came out everybody was talking about it, I got interested in the story and then at some point I think I got it in a two-for-one sale on Audible and that's how it got into my library. And it's been sitting there for quite a while and never really felt like starting it. So in September I was running out of credits and I was running out of books to listen to so I finally started it and I hated it. I don't hate the narrator, but the narration. What the woman and the story and the way it's told, it was annoying. You have this really complaining, whiny character who was whining about not getting into the college she wanted to. And then there was this sexual harassment, which not making it bad or minimizing it, but it sounded like nothing dramatic for how much dramatic she made it out to be. And for the results that the author wanted, I think she could have just made the harassment more, if you get what I mean. I don't know. It kind of felt a little bit baseless all the complaints and the character and it was not a likable character. And then in chapter two we have a section put in there where because the character is studying at college and literature and all that thing, the professor said, talks about how unlikable characters are important and that we also need anti-heroes. And I was just pissed off because the book was telling me you have to like it because it's an important thing to read about characters you don't like. And I think, yes, you, you need to read about characters that you don't like, but the characters need to make sense. and you need to be interested in their story and not just want to bash them on the hat for being such whiny, complainy people. That's not helpful at all. Anyways, I really didn't like it. I struggled and then I went on Goodreads to check what other people said, how it's going to go, which I usually don't do. And a lot of people complained about the white privilege of this young woman whining about all the things she had and that the story wasn't going anywhere more interesting. And apparently the boyfriend would be the most interesting part of the book. So I DNF'd it. And that was my September. I had a very mixed bag of books, some good, some bad, some really horrible, some very nice and pleasurable. I'm rambling. This is long enough. Let me know in comments how your September was and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.